Hello and thanks for joining us for our late night newscast coming to you from Adidang's news centre in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story tonight, military officials in South Korea say North Korea has attempted to launch a ballistic missile from a submarine in violation of international sanctions. They say the missile probably exploded in the early stages of flight over the East Sea. Oh Soo Young starts us off. Another provocation from North Korea. This time it tried unsuccessfully to test fire a submarine launched ballistic missile or SLBM. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff says Saturday that a missile was launched at around 11.30 a.m. South Korea time from a 2,000-ton submarine near the eastern port city of Shimpo. While it ejected the submarine normally, the missile only travelled a few kilometres before exploding in midair at an altitude of 10,000 metres. The South Korean military has strongly condemned the launch attempt. It says North Korea's latest provocation following its Musudan missile launches last month violate UN security resolutions on the regime. Saturday's launch is the latest in a series of SLBM experiments and Pyongyang's second attempt this year. North Korea claimed it successfully test-fired a KN-11 SLBM in April, but officials in Seoul dispute that, saying the missile flew only 30 kilometers before breaking up in midair. The minimum range of the KN-11 is 300 kilometers. Tests conducted last year were also mostly deemed failures by South Korean and international observers. However, due to the continuing development of its SLBM program, South Korean military officials believe the regime may be able to deploy SLBMs for combat purposes in as little as two years' time. The launch attempt came 24 hours after South Korea and the United States confirmed the deployment of a U.S. missile defense system known as the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or THAAD, to the south. The system is aimed at countering Pyongyang's growing ballistic missile threats. Also earlier this week, the U.S. State Department directly sanctioned North Korean leader Kim Jong-un for the first time, holding him accountable for the regime's grave human rights abuses. North Korea denounced this move as an open declaration of war and threatened a tough response to the blacklisting. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News. The South Korean government has strongly condemned North Korea's submarine launch ballistic missile test. A statement released by the Foreign Ministry on Saturday said Pyongyang's repetitive and deliberate provocations will never be tolerated. The ministry said Seoul will work with its allies to get North Korea to abide by UN Security Council resolutions and continue to ramp up sanctions and pressure on the regime. It also said the South Korean government will strengthen deterrence against North Korea through its defense alliance with the U.S., with countermeasures that include deploying the THAAD missile defense system to the south. And South Korea's major political parties have had their say on Seoul and Washington's confirmation Friday that the THAAD missile defense system will be deployed to South Korea. The ruling Senuri party said it was a timely and inevitable decision that's necessary to maintain regional peace and security due to North Korea's continual provocations. The main opposition Minju party said it wasn't opposed to the deployment, but it criticized the government's diplomatic and security strategies in addressing China's concerns. Concerns. The minor opposition People's Party was outspoken in its opposition. A party spokesman said there are questions about the effectiveness of THAAD, adding that the decision had completely disregarded the stances of South Korea's neighbors like China. Authorities in the United States say Thursday's ambush of police officers in Dallas that killed five and injured seven others appears to have been the work of a single gunman. The suspect was a 25-year-old Army veteran, Micah Johnson. The suspect stated to negotiators that he wanted to, quote, kill white people, especially white officers. Police later found bomb-making materials, rifles and ammunition during a search of his home. The gun attack came at the end of a peaceful rally held to protest against the killings this week of two African-American men by police in Louisiana and Minnesota. New protest marches against police violence uh, took place in Phoenix, New Orleans, Atlanta and several other cities on Friday local time. U.S. President Barack Obama, who is still in Europe, called it a vicious, calculated and despicable attack on law enforcement. The White House says Obama will visit Dallas early next week, cutting short the Spanish part of his trip. 
NATO will deploy troops to Baltic states and Poland for the first time and increase air and sea patrols to reassure allies following Russia's seizure of Crimea from Ukraine. Holding a leaders' summit in Warsaw, the 28-nation Western Defense Alliance decided to move four battalions totaling up to 4,000 troops in northeastern Europe on a rotating basis. NATO Secretary Jens Stoltenberg said the deployment was not aimed at threatening or isolating Russia, adding that NATO will continue uh, to seek a constructive dialogue with Moscow. U.S. President Barack Obama said Washington would deploy about 1,000 soldiers in Poland under this plan. The wealth of South Korea's 50 richest people by stock assets tumbled this year, according to data provided by corporate tracker Chebol.com. The combined equity value of the 50 wealthiest people was tallied at 130.9 billion US dollars. That is down 2.3 billion dollars from early January. Lee Jae Yong, who is the vice chairman of Samsung Electronics, took the biggest hit out of the tycoons, watching his fortune tumble by more than $1 billion to $5.5 billion due to the sluggish performance of major Samsung affiliates. Yi's father, Samsung chairman Yi Gun saw his net asset value grow more than 6% to $10.3 billion. Now, it's a sad fact of life these days that many senior citizens in Korea live alone, which increases their vulnerability to a myriad of health problems. However, local research has shown that taking part in community programs can improve not only their physical, but also their emotional health. Kim mok reports. Various programs are being held across the country to provide help to the increasing number of senior citizens living by themselves. In a Korean traditional house in a rural village, many elders regularly gather to spend time socializing. They decorate ceramic vases, make air fresheners, learn gymnastic moves and dance together. Every time I wake up, I think about going to this place. I feel it's like heaven, so I'm very thankful. When I'm here, I have no time to worry about other things. Community centers located in the city also provide a wide range of activities to keep senior citizens company. Many of them play billiards or go, while others spend their time growing and harvesting vegetables. Research says that when seniors participate in community life, it is highly effective in combating depression and in reducing the level of cholesterol and body fat. I think creating a program aimed at improving relations among themselves, elders, will be helpful in making their lives more enjoyable and healthy. As the number of elderly citizens increases, more support and management is needed to help improve the quality of life among our elderly population. Kim mok Arirang News. Now we're moving toward the midpoint of July, the time of year when UV rays are at their strongest. While we are advised to wear sunscreen all year round, it's especially important to slap it on during the summer even when it's not that sunny outside. Park Se-young tells us why. Ultraviolet rays can damage the skin and cause skin cancer. Sunscreen can help protect the skin, but many people are not aware of which one to buy. Sunscreen products are labeled with SPF numbers and a PA ranking. SPF, or sun protection factor, is a measure of the product's ability to filter UVB rays, which cause sunburns and most skin cancers. SPF 1 protects the skin for about 15 minutes, SPF 10 for about 150 minutes, and so on. But regardless of the SPF, experts advise reapplying sunscreen every 2 to 3 hours. PA is a protection grade for UVA rays, which penetrate deeper layers of the skin and cause signs of aging. The more plus symbols, the more protection the sunscreen provides against UVA rays. UVA rays are strong even on cloudy days, which is why sunscreen application is essential no matter the weather. Normally, people only think about the SPF numbers, but since the UVA rays are often strong on cloudy days, it's very important to check for the PA symbol too. Sunscreens with an SPF of 15 or 20 and PA double plus are enough for most people in their daily life. For outdoor activities, products with an SPF of 30 to 50 and PA triple plus are recommended. And if there's water involved, waterproof sunscreens are recommended. Park Se-young, Arirang News. 
Now, beaches along Korea's east coast have opened to the public just in time for the baking summer heat. Expressways headed east out of Seoul were crammed with vacationers looking to catch a few rays and have a paddle in the sea at any one of the more than 90 east coast beaches that have opened for the summer season. They did so on Friday. Officials in Kangwondo province say up to 100,000 people were enjoying a day out on the east coast on Saturday. Vacationers are urged to have fun, of course, but also stay safe. No safety-related incidents which led to death or serious injury were reported last summer, and officials are keen to ensure the next couple of months also pass by smoothly. Finally, let's take a look at the weather here in Korea, and uh, we are having a warm and sticky night in the capital. The mercury is only going to dip to 22 degrees Celsius, and it is humid as well. It was a real scorcher in Seoul today, and we'll see more of the same across the entire country on Sunday. We'll be under partly cloudy skies in Seoul, and nationwide afternoon highs will reach into the low and even mid-30s. With that, let's take a look at the weather around the world. Well, those are stories we have for you at this hour. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out the website, adidang.com forward slash news. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend. Goodbye.